Today is the third Sunday after the Epiphany, and today in our reading, God's glory will be revealed. People will stand at attention, some will weep, some will prostrate themselves in prayer, and the unity of the church is another reflection of God's glory. So today we hear God's promises as they are fulfilled. Let us begin worship with a confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children, and if our reverence is the way of the Lord, we do not hear and be accepted. We have rejected your word, and made us to come to us so. We have failed to show hospitality to those who call us in love, except for repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, and lead us, that we may be bathed in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Rejoice in the good news of Christ Jesus. Our sins are forgiven. We are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as free and forgiven children of God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
God, you have caused the Holy Scriptures to be written for the nourishment of your people. Grant that we may hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that comforted by your promises, we may embrace and forever hold fast to the hope of eternal life through your Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, our Lord. Amen. May be seated. A reading from Nehemiah, the 8th chapter. All the people of Israel gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the book, the law, before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He had read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday, in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen. Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. The heavens declare the glory of God and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One way it tells the tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to read unto the world, where God has pitched his tent to the sun. He comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber, chamber, it rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The command of the Lord is clear and is made like the young. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much by gold. Sweeter far than honey, than honey and foam. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. A reading from 1 Corinthians. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, 
I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, not yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all possess gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret, but strive for the greater gifts. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. God.
family and children ministry, the senior ministry, you name it, we were involved. I remember when the first day came that it was my turn to preach in front of the congregation. They had this massive pulpit. It was a Swedish congregation originally, so I don't know if any of you have had the opportunity to be at one of those larger Swedish churches, but they often will have the pulpit a little bit elevated. Uh, not quite as high as the cathedrals in Europe, but pretty high as it is. Well, they knew I was not very tall, so they always kindly put a step stool there. So at least I would not nearly be a talking head as I preached. I remember stepping into that pulpit the first time and looking out across the congregation, and there he was, my preaching professor. You think I was a little nervous? Yeah, I was. I think he knew because as I looked at him, he smiled and gave me a little one of these. Well, as I looked around the congregation, a lot of the professors from campus actually were members of that congregation. So not only was it my preaching professor, but it was my professor of liturgy, my professor of the House of Sacred Structures. Well, I thought to myself, I need to clear my mind and preach. And in those days, I always read my sermons, so that was a little bit easier. It was already prepared. And as I began to preach, I became a little bit more at ease. I think the Spirit of the Lord came upon me and said, you know, there's something more important than getting focused on somebody sitting out there in the pew. I wonder what Jesus was thinking the day that the scroll was handed to him, and he knew he would stand up and read from the prophet Isaiah. Our gospel for today tells what occurred immediately following Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. Jesus was tempted in a location that today is known as the Judea Desert. It was about, oh, I would say 150 miles south of Nazareth. I'm sure you're familiar with the story how the devil came to him and tempted him, mind, body, and spirit, as he was out in the desert, starving, thirsty, and tired, and weary. Well, he successfully made it through all those temptations, and immediately after that, we're told that he began to teach and preach around the countryside. And it seems as if he made a beeline to his hometown of Nazareth. What better place to bring the good news of the gospel but to his hometown first? And as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath, and immediately somebody handed him the scroll. And in those days, for the readings, the person reading would stand up, even when they preached, similar to now. And he was doing that. We're told that as he stood, he began to read this part of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Well, everyone during the time of Jesus would know what the year of the Lord's favor was. It was actually the Jubilee, which would take place every 50 years. <clears throat> every 50 years, something extraordinary would take place. The ram's horn would be blown, which would be a sign of the beginning of the Jubilee. Anybody who had a debt, your mortgage, all of a sudden, the balance was zero. People who were enslaved were set free. The oppressed were given what they needed. The hungry were fed. Those without homes were provided with shelter. It was a wonderful time of celebration across the land. All people were treated the same and had the same opportunity. So when Jesus read these words from Isaiah, he basically was telling the people that he himself was the Jubilee. 
that he had come to set people free from the power of sin and death. That those things that hold us captive would no longer have dominion over us as a result of God's grace and God's gift to us in Christ. What a powerful message that was that Jesus brought that day. No need to have fear, but to rejoice. It's interesting, too, that Jesus uses the word today. Notice that <clears throat> in the very last word. Today, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Today, in Luke, was the day that Christ was born in Bethlehem. Today was the day that Zechariah received redemption through faith. Today was the day <clears throat> that that criminal hanging next to Jesus would see Jesus in paradise. Today is the day that the Lord has made where we come to faith through the Holy Spirit and God's Word. Every day can be today where Christ is present. Where the good news is brought to the poor. Where the captives are released. Where the blind recover their sight. Where the oppressed go free. These words of Jesus actually were a way that he claimed his identity, purpose, and mission for the church. And today, as we go forth from this place, we might ask ourselves, in what way can we show and tell our faith today and every day? Not merely in this place, but every place where we find ourselves today and every day. Amen? Amen.
church council member. I wanted to mention, though, that there are certain individuals working on a regular basis within the congregation that are not members of the church council. I would like to thank Jerry Slack, who continues to serve as treasurer, and Gisla, who continues to serve in the capacity of financial secretary, along with Sue, who is on council. As I call your name, please stand where you are as you are able. Uh, Leslin is watching from home. She also is a church council member, but she has a little mark to be concerned about. He's of an age where he cannot yet be vaccinated. So I said to her, her best bet probably would be to continue to stay home until it's safer for him to come to church. So as I call your name, please stand where you are. Uh, who has been selected by the congregation to leadership within the congregation. Church Council President, Lynn Buckingham. Vice President, Janet Solomon. Secretary, Julie Buckingham. Sue Capera. Laura Lee Steffen. Erica Eglin Fritz. Catherine Keohane. Leslie Cook and Don Maxwell. Please stay standing. In baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ liberated you from sin and death and made you members of the church. Through word and sacrament, you've been nurtured in faith. The Apostle Paul writes, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives to everyone ability for particular service. The Spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. You've been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith reflect him in whose name we gather. You are to work together with other members to see that the worship and work of Christ are done in this congregation, and that God's will is done in the community and in the whole world. You are to be diligent in your specific area of serving, that the one Lord who empowers you is glorified. You are to be examples of faith, active in love, to help maintain the harmony and life of this congregation. On behalf of our brothers and sisters in Christ, I ask you, are you ready to accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you've been elected? If so, answer yes by the help of God. Yes, by the help of God. People of God, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders, and will share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? Yes, by the help of God. I now declare you installed as church council members and officers of this congregation. May God continue to bless you with God's Holy Spirit, that you may prove faithful servants of Christ. And on behalf of the congregation, I want to offer our thanks for your continued service. Let us confess our faith with Christians throughout the world by leading to the next in peace. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made. Of one meeting with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate to the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in 
through the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worthy and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord to come. Amen. At this time, we'll have the prayers of intercession. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to visit the church, the world, and all that God has made beautiful in this time. Hear our prayer. You reveal yourself to us as leading us to the church. Fulfill your word through the faithful witness of your church. Send us out to bring your liberating kingdom to all people. God of praise, hear our prayer. We pray for our partners in ministry here in Teaneck and the Meadowlands Prosper, the Northern Mission District, Human Social Services of New Jersey, the New Jersey Synod, the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, the wide Christian community, our friends from the Life of Church Mission in Haiti, and people of faith everywhere as they live out their calling to serve. God of praise, hear our prayer. All creation proclaims your handiwork. Teach us to love and envision the beautiful body that you have created. Bless tiny insects, moment whales, and every creature in between. Sustain species that raise from extinction. God of praise, hear our prayer. We desire that there be no dissension among us, for we are divided in our society, nation, or world. Come quickly to reunite us in one body. great hope in your promises, O oh God. We lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus the Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And those also with you. Amen. 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 May be seated.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, sharing our life who lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so in the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your good word to all. Strengthen with the goodness with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God who leads you in the pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Amen. Okay, seated. Next Sunday after Mass, we will have our congregational meeting part two. And we'll be hearing from the various teams and committees and all of the reports at that time. Bible study on Thursday is via Zoom, and we continue our study, which is based on the Bishop's challenge and God's intention at the time of creation. Are there any other announcements today, Sue? Yes. Um, I'd like to give you a little bit of a info on our January mission of the month, which is the Southern Poverty Law Center, which I'm glad to say that we have been now supporting for a few years. Um, uh, according to the blurb that they will give you on when you go to their website, they are the catalyst for racial justice in the South and beyond, working in partnership with communities to dismantle white supremacy, strengthen intersectional movements, and advance the human rights of all people. Uh, they were started, the Southern Poverty Law Center was started in 1971 by two civil rights uh, lawyers down in uh, the South and uh, Montgomery. And uh, they, their purpose was to ensure that the promise of the civil rights movement, which they just got out of, supposedly, became a reality for all. Uh, since that time, obviously, we still need them very much. They work legally through the courts to, um, uh, to, what can you say, they, they get these hate groups, they uh, get them legally, okay, to dismantle them. Uh, but they've now branched out, not just getting these people in the courts, but they are fighting hate and discrimination through other avenues as well. They have started a blog, the Hate Watch. They will then monitor throughout the country and now worldwide hate groups where they are located and then how they can then get to them legally. Uh, they have education programs for educators, caregivers, administrators, in terms of teaching tolerance to the young and to all people so that you can then get a date through that avenue. So they've expanded to uh, offices down in Tallahassee, Miami, uh, New Orleans, Jackson, Mississippi, okay? Um, I'm very pleased that we are continuing to support them. As you know, their work is extremely important as it was back then. We are still fighting the same battles now. So, thank you for your support. Thank you, Sue. Here's a lot. I just want to remind everybody who has not picked up that we are in the same room back in the mailbox. And so, if you will pick it up, it would be nice, and you don't have to know it now. Thank you. Thank you, Gisela. Liv. In line with uh, January and Brother Martin Luther King's birthday, which is why we from our commission today selected January to be the Southern Poverty Law Center, throughout the year, um, the Senate, the New Jersey Senate of the ELCA has been uh, recognizing the significant challenges that have to do with Reverend Jerry Jones. If you haven't heard through either our Bible study or other things that we produced over this past several months, um, who David Jones was in Philadelphia and what happened in terms of his search and the cost for the lawsuit to him. Um, look it up or come to the Bible study. But um, part of the bishop's challenge is to learn, all of us, as a, as a senator and as individuals who go out with lawsuits to black Americans um, in the past and continuing today, and to commit to accepting our responsibility, responding in face, faith, and working to adjust, address racial inequality and injustice in our world. Um, so this is continuing through May, and one of the projects that is going on right now is that each synod who has committed to support each congregation in the synod committed to supporting the Bishop's Challenge 
has asked to create a club square around the theme of the spiritual injustice, what our church might be doing, um, scripture around these issues, or um, together as the community of So we have our club square, and if anyone is feeling creative, we're going to try and get a little committee together. Creative in the sense of actually producing something on our club square, or creative in the sense of coming up with ideas, or maybe you know somebody who cares about the and who might like to help us. So you're all welcome to let me know. And I'm going to send out an email to the whole congregation, because some people aren't here for me not online today. So we'll, we'll be hearing more about it. So watch your email and speak to me if you're interested. If that's how you do it, Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Or Lee. I think the book from the Royal will be the best. I don't know if this is it, but I'll read it and I'll return it if anyone's interested. But I'll read it and I'll return it. What is the title? There He Stood, Here He Stands. Sounds like it's about Martin Luther. Yeah, yeah. So this, I think I've had it around it here. Oh, we will put that to the Reformation and anybody who wants to. Sure. 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 Sounds like a great book. Any other announcements? Then let us stand as we are able to sing the sending hymn with one voice, 723. The Spirit sends us forth to serve. <laughs>